And this is this is a mouthful. This is another one that I think could could certainly be uh, a topic for a, a webinar, and may have been kind of a topic for uh, a Refresh Friday recently. I think Refresh Friday number thirty went into uh, taking the red pill and really diving into data. So if you're a data uh, data fiend on this call and you're that that mentality, I would certainly recommend looking up that Refresh Friday number thirty, I believe. Yes, uh, with uh, Jeffrey Tognetti and Mike Phillips. It's just a super interesting listen. Um, but what he's asking here, what Peter's asking is, will you utilize my sales and prospect data daily for accurate targeting and managing advertising waste? I would, even if you don't quite understand everything he's asking there, ask that directly of your vendor because that's gonna start a really cool conversation around data. They might go, holy cow, what a, you know, <laughs> this is a conversation. You, you, you should get the right person calling you back if you ask this. What are the kinds of data that you can use? Right, so let's let's keep it a little bit high level. So first party data is your audience data collected directly from the source. This type of data is like using my CRM data or my prospect data. Maybe I have some equity customers. So my equity tool, wherever that's integrated, uh, gives me this list of customers um, that I know are in market to buy. Instead of just ignoring that data, I'm gonna ingest that data. I'm gonna put it in social where there's a good match rate. Um, I'm going to put it in my email platform. I'm sending them emails. I'm going to direct a targeted message as personalized as possible to that customer based on where I know they're at in the buying cycle. Using your DMS data maybe to, to upload the customers who you know are um, due for service and, and loading that into your, into your social page. That's some examples of how you could be leveraging first party data. It's, I think data is, is the lifeblood of di digital advertising. Uh, your website data, although it remains relatively anonymous, is another opportunity for you to be gathering information from your website. Who's been to this site and how can I retarget them? Uh, some examples of, of strategies there. We just talked about importing CRM uh, lists, DMS lists for, for advertising. Uh, even, even anonymous um, advertising. So I know customers have been to my website. I'm going to set up remarketing lists for search ads, which essentially says instead of Instead of everybody who punches in these keywords, I want these, you know, 500, 1,000, 10,000 customers who have come to my site and have looked at my vehicles, I want them to see this ad. They, I value them more even than the rest because I know they've already been shopping my site. These are data sources that are yours today. It's, it's important just to ask, hey, what data are we using? What data could we be using? Or maybe we're not using data at all. We're just reliant on Google and Facebook to give us that, that data. Second party data, certainly watch that refresh uh, Friday 30 because it gets into the, the other stuff, right? Someone else's first party data sold in a private data marketplace purchased directly from the source. This conversation, this question, while it is, is specifically about uh, eliminating you know, marketing waste and making sure that you're being as targeted as you can with the data that's available to you from the dealership, it also could lend itself into what data are you collecting from me today and why? And where does that data go? Do you keep it in house or are you selling it? Um, that goes down a, probably a different path that there's a whole hour conversation on, uh, but that's kind of what second party data is when they're grabbing that. And then when we get into third party data, third party data is, are things like, uh, I'm sure everybody's heard you know, Oracle thrown around, Alliant, these other places that have this data that's a, it's, it's a blend of, of second party data. It's a blend of offline data like poke information. Um, it could be anything really. I don't want to go too far into the weeds with this, but if, you, if your vendor says they're using third party data, just ask them, cool, what is it? <laughs> Where do you get it? And and why that's is probably it? The, the best way to handle that one I've ever heard. Yeah. Super simple. It, it, you have to you have to remember that you don't have to know everything about this before you approach your vendor. And if you feel that way, then there's something wrong with the trust relationship somewhere, right? You should be able to trust them enough to say, hey, I'm not sure about this, but I want to know more. Tell me about it. Um, and third-party data is very useful. You can layer that data on top of existing markets. And, and what you're really trying for as an advertiser if I'm advertising for a business, for a dealership, what I'm trying to do is take that money they've given me, use the tools at my disposal, and get as close as I can to the customers at any given moment that are in market to buy. And sometimes I'm going to miss and sometimes I'm going to hit, but I'm going to evaluate that data month to month, quarter to quarter, week to week, 
uh, to make sure that we're moving the needle. I always want to be better than I was the month before for the dealership because that's the job. That really is the job. If I set it and forget it and I say, hey, I've got this great formula. I'm just going to set up this advertising campaign. And I'm just going to let it run. There is no qualified inspection on the other end. And, and that's hugely important um, in the advertising business. Nothing should be fully automated. Automation plays a great role in advertising. It allows you to do things that a physically a person couldn't do. But if you're not evaluating them on a regular basis, I always, I always think of uh, I Love Lucy when when they were working in the chocolate factory, right? There's an example of automation. Those chocolates were being made automatically, but what they didn't have on the other end was qualified inspection. They had Lucy and Ethel who were now taking chocolates off of the, off of the line and just throwing them you know, in their shirts and wherever and eating them, whatever they could do, because they didn't know what they were doing. And so if you do have automation in your advertising, make sure that somebody's looking at it on the other end and making sure that what that automation is producing is quality traffic. 